On May 1884, a prestigious Exposición Nacional de Bellas Artes, Madrid Exposition of Fine Arts, was being held, wherein a historical painting called Spoliarium had won first gold medal, and it was made by a Filipino painter named Juan Luna de San Pedro y Novicio Ancheta, also known as just Juan Luna. Well, I guess we're all familiar with the name Juan Luna. Our teachers used to mention this name when we were in elementary and high school. He was said to be a painter, but who really is Juan Luna? What about his painting called Spoliarium? And what's with this painting that made it won a gold medal? In order to answer these questions, join us as we dig deeper to the life of Juan Luna and in analyzing his famous painting Spoliarium. Juan Luna de San Pedro y Novicio Ancheta was a Filipino painter, sculptor, and a political activist of the Philippine Revolution during the late 19th century. He was born on October 23, 1857 in the town of Badoc, Ilocos Norte in the northern Philippines. But at the age of 42, on December 7, 1899, Luna died due to angina pectoris, or a heart attack. Luna was the third among the seven children of Joaquin Luna de San Pedro y Posadas and Laureana Novicio y Ancheta. He became one of the first recognized Philippine artists with his iconic and remarkable paintings such as Blood Compact, The Death of Cleopatra, and especially The Spoliarium. So, Ever wondered what this painting looked like? Well, here it is. Presenting the Spoliarium. Take a good look at this massive painting. And did you know that when the government of Spain sent the painting to the Philippines in 1958 as a gift, they needed to divide it into three pieces, with each piece going into its own shipping crate because of its size. Now this is the picture of the painting with its three different pieces. And this is the picture of the painting alongside with an average person. Massive. It was not even a picture but a painting. No wonder why it took eight months for Juan Luna to finish this masterpiece. Spolarium is an oil painting on a life-size canvas that measures 4.22 meters in height and 7.675 meters in width. It currently hangs in the main gallery of National Museum of Fine Arts and is considered as the largest painting being displayed in the said museum. The formal elements used in this art are lines, shape, light, and visual texture. First, Lines can be evident in the painting by the lines in the floor and the implied lines that is made by the bodies in the painting. Second would be the shape which is geometric with the different objects present and also organic with the shape of the people in the painting plus volume. Because of the mass you get from the present figures in the painting. Third is the light and value how it shows some sort of manipulated light. Light is being used here because the artist used artificial light to portray the darkness of the room. Fourth, the color he used were kind of mournful, serious and it gives off the tone and emotion of the painting. The painting is rich in the color that gives warm mood to the eyes. And red is the central color that attracts the most attention. And I can say that the color are striking and quite unique. It has a space in the painting to make our eyes rest, and it has balanced color and contrast to see in the eyes. Definitely, the painting shows a tragic event, but also shows deeper meaning. Lastly would be the visual texture he used, giving off a certain illusion to texture to make the characters in the painting seem real. One Luna used a style which is a mix of realistic art and representational art. The form he used is a two-dimensional painting type of artwork. And now let's get our attention focused on the image and figures that is seen in the painting. So here, 
we can see some diagonal lines in the painting's main focus point and it indicates that there is an act of struggle between the Roman soldiers and the gladiators. Diagonal lines can depict depth through perspective as if the viewers are being pulled visually into the image. It also conveys a certain energy that make it felt like it was moving or in motion. We can notice a crowd of men cheering and watching the horrific scenario from the painting's left side. A scene showing fallen gladiator being dragged mercilessly across the chamber floor at the center. And a depiction of a lady gripping on the floor is painted on the right side. Just by looking at the figure of the lady here on the right side of the painting, we seem to feel her mourning as she was looking down and looking hopeless. The initial signification of the wounded bodies, the Roman soldiers, the grieving lady, and many other features of the picture produced a powerful connotation, contradicting the principle of order and harmony across the whole work of art. Now, if we take a look at the painting, it could be divided into three parts. We begin in the left side of the painting, where a group of men looking like a Roman politicians are laughing and stripping the dead gladiators of their worldly possessions. So these Roman politicians represent the Spanish government officials and the priors, while the dead gladiators is representing us, the Filipinos. We are being stripped by the Spaniards of our lands. So here in the center, we can see Roman soldiers dragging the dead gladiators, meaning we are being dragged by the Spaniards to unknown or to emptiness, hence the dark background as you can see here. Mostly in the right side, is a woman weeping and this woman represents our country, the Philippines. If you guys could remember how we call our country in Filipino, it is Inang Bayan, hence the female representation. Our motherland weeping on our situation at that moment. So Juan Luna did not just paint this to be an entry in an exposition. Luna used his canvas, brush, and paint as a form of silent protest to help the Filipinos and people of Spain see the real situation of the Filipino at that time. The spoliarium is viewed as a depiction of the sadness, suffering, and pain that the Filipino people had endured throughout the Spanish colonial era. It expresses three key ideas. Prejudice that exists in society as represented by the gladiators. How supremacy controls and divides mankind. And injustices done to people without influence who attempt to defend their freedoms. Additionally, it symbolizes the pain of the oppressed or those who were unable to stop the violations of human rights, whether they were committed against them or those so close to them, and were left with no choice but to see the horror. Knowing the meaning behind the painting Spoliarium, we felt motivated because it does not romanticize a term that is evident in both painting and the real world and portrays mystery that has actually been injured realistically. As we are about to conclude, we would like to say that the kind of situation depicted in the painting is still present in today's world. We may not be a slave under the Spaniard anymore, but there are several things from which to be enslaved. As we observe or hear about war, exploitation, corruption, etc., we can see or hear that there is still a significant chance that more powerful nation will try to colonize or oppress other less powerful nations. We are unable to argue against the absence of human pride or desires since they still exist. Slavery can be felt or experienced in many different ways. From the little things to the bigger ones, it could be us being a slave by our past, or on our workplace, or on what people says. So this act of Juan Luna and his purpose creating this painting to form a silent protest in his own ways. Somewhat gave us a courage to speak up, meaning we need to talk more about the hidden truth that is happening everywhere. It is time to expose and face the thing that enslaves us. It is time to use our voice and speak up. <laughs>